Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. I'll just hello. wait for a minute to make sure that you we can be heard. Okay, welcome um, to the Ender Gallery stream at AmazeFest. Um, we are broadcasting from uh, Saskatchewan in Canada, which is Treaty 4 territory. And um, the traditional uh, homeland of the um, Cree, the Soto, the Lakota, the Dakota, and the Métis people. Our servers um, running Minecraft are based in Germany, in Bavaria specifically, and part of um, what we like to think about through Ender Gallery is how the digital spaces that we use to make art or gather are um, occupying real spaces. And it's often important to think about that. Um, so uh, you are gathered wherever you are on the other end of the screen. And thank you so much for joining us. Yes, I'm uh, Kat Blumke. Uh, also here in Regina with John, and um, I'm a co-curator of Ender Gallery. Uh, we're just going to do a quick round of introductions for everyone who's viewing. Um, I'll go next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Sarah Friend. I'm also one of the Ender curators um, streaming to you from uh, Berlin. Uh, hi, I'm Kat. I'm streaming from Regina, Saskatchewan on Treaty 4 territory, and I'm one of the Ender Gallery residents, artists. Yes. Hi, I'm Hui Di. I'm streaming from Pittsburgh, PA, USA. I am uh, the current resident in Urban Gallery. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to talk about uh, the projects that we've been working on uh, in Ender Gallery uh, this year. Um, first, just like to give a quick introduction to what Ender Gallery is. Um, it, it, it is an uh, artist in residence based in the video game Minecraft. Um, uh, Sarah, do you want to talk about how uh, it, Ender Gallery has come to be? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Um, so Ender Gallery kicked off um, as an idea uh, in fall of last year, uh, and I won't lie, it was in some ways a bit of a response to um, the pandemic's uh, driving of art into online spaces, but um, you know, being an artist who's worked in online spaces for a long time, you know, wanting to see that done in playful ways and to expand, you know, where, where an online exhibition space could be. Um, and, uh, and, and the first people I thought to approach to actually be artists uh, in residence at Under Gallery were Kat and John, who I've known for a long time. Um, through sort of um, media art and video game art uh, community in Toronto, uh, where we all used to live. Uh, but then through talking to them, you know, they got so excited about the idea, one thing led to another, and that kind of changed. And I was like, do you just wanna co-curate this, in this endeavor together? <laughs> um, and they were also both, I think you're both do you have the same job title of digital coordinators at the Mackenzie? Yeah, They're both more digital or less. coordinators of, of slight variations. <laughs> coordinate different, slightly different things. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So uh, through uh, their work there, um, the Mackenzie got looped in. One thing kind of led to another, and Ender took its current form. Um, and we started uh, really getting serious in January 2020. Yeah, uh, we released an open call um, back in uh, January um, 2021, and uh, we received over 100 applications. And it was, uh, we were really interested in um, folks who were coming from Minecraft, thinking about it as like a medium, thinking about its sort of specificities. So very much like considering it as an art form um, and 
from those like over 100 applications, we had to narrow it down to four uh, slots that we had funding for. Um, and two of those artists that we uh, uh, were so, so thrilled with their proposals are here with us today. Um, uh, that is Kat and Hoodie here. Um, and what and the, and the things that really drew us to uh, working with these artists and just like the proposals that we were interested in, uh, we're really thinking about uh, the platform, um, thinking about the role of the artist uh, on on the on Minecraft, um, that kind of work that's involved as well, uh, bringing in um, personal stories and personal connections to Minecraft and sort of exploring it for what it offers. Um, and its own types of affordances. So whether that is um, because it's this amazing, you know, creative tool for constructing things or uh, a tool of uh, expression because you're able to design things that are very specific to you and perhaps to your own experience. Um, we were able to uh, focus in on these four really great projects and two of which we're going to uh, look at today. Um, we should maybe help head on over into Minecraft, um, so we can take a look at uh, Kat Haynes's project. Um, mm -hmm. Hello. Okay. Are we in Minecraft now? We are streaming we are. Minecraft. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, I guess I'll talk a little bit at a high level about uh, what this project was sort of conceived as um, and how it, uh, I don't know, some of the, the theory behind it, I suppose, um, and how that factored into, into what I did. Um, so I thought a lot about space throughout this project. I was really interested in creating like different spaces for different purposes. Um, so the first space I built was uh, the residence center. Um, and it was just sort of because I needed like a home. Um, and I wanted there to be like a physical presence for the residents in the in the game, because I, I figured if it's a residence, there should be a residency. Uh, or if it's a residency, there should be a residence building. <laughs> Um, and so this is where I slept um, and I kept a little journal in here um, of, of what I did throughout the different days. Um, and so that creates little bits of narrative that people can narrative that people can interact with. But I just broke the window in your in your room. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> you can fix it. Um, but the the main part of this project, what it was really conceived as, um, was this reconstruction of my surgically constructed genitals um, as an investigation into like how trans bodies are consumed and how transition bodies are consumed. Um, and inside of it is a gallery with, with a series of different stories and narratives that are paired with images from my social media archive. Um, so the blocks that I used to construct the vulva and, and the vaginal canal with um, is really where I started to think about how to use the game as a medium. Um, and I thought a lot about the possibilities of modding the game um, and how that sort of related to um, feminist theory and trans feminist theory about um, like transforming our social and material realities. Um, so with modding, there's this opportunity to retexture blocks um, really easily. Um, but also through modding um, language packs, we can also like rename blocks. Um, and so for me, this really speaks a lot to uh, like Donna Haraway's concept of the cyborg as like a creature of social and material reality. Um, and, and we're able to sort of transform our, our materiality through like the tactility of the textures um, and so these textures are actually uh, drawn from an image uh, that my partner took of my genitals. 
um, that I did during, during a self exam. Um, and so these are taken, these are textures that are, that are little 16 by 16 pixel blocks from my body. Um, and so it was a way of bringing my body into the game, um, but also a way of like in a really playful way, um, exploring my body um, and exploring my body in a really creative way. Um, because throughout a lot of the process of um, going through the process of surgical transition, uh, you lose a lot of agency, I feel like. Um, it's, a, it's not something that you have a lot of active input into, you're just sort of swept along in a stream of process. Um, and, and I talked about this in one of my uh, pieces inside the, the gallery um, and, and also in an artist, in one of the artist talks that I did, you know, that I was really, really upset that I never got like a lookbook of vulvas um, as part of this process to, to say like, these are the features that I'm really interested in. Um, this, is, this is a concept of how I would like my body to look. And so this was an opportunity to, to have more agency into that process um, and, and to, transform, um, to transform the game to really, uh, yeah, bring my body into it in this like playful, constructive way where I was able to um, really define how it looked, how it felt, um, and even what was inside of it, um, and, and how I wanted people to explore and interact with it. And so um, I think this like, this kind of speaks to the potential of Minecraft as this, um, this opportunity to not only like, explore how we can modify our social and material realities to create more just worlds or more livable worlds for us. Um, but also through the mechanic of like constructing things block by block, um, we can like literally create new realities. Um, and uh, this, this ended up being a very, very intimate space inside the gallery, which I guess we can go inside now. Um, partly, partly because, you know, it has, uh, it has an image of me uh, prior to my transition as part of the, the lesbian wedding piece. Um, and that's like a really intimate piece to share. Um, it has uh, like nudity, it has like me in the bath. Um, and uh, this is the image of me doing the self exam, um, and uh, and this piece um, inside this door that you sort of have to intentionally pass through. Uh, that is a selfie I took, um, sort of the first selfie I took when after my surgery when I could sort of see everything, and it's this very cyborg moment I feel because I have these. I have like a catheter attached to myself still, and it's um, it's this very vulnerable, intimate moment. And so, inviting people into this space, uh, even though it's this digital space, it, it's still this very intimate, personal space. And and um, I found during the the opening and some of the public events, inviting people into this space, especially. Uh, Minecraft characters that I, I didn't know who was on the other end of um, was was very very interesting to have that like very personal but still somewhat detached experience where like we might be chatting um, but there isn't that like voice connection or that video connection um, and so that I think that was um, one of the places I felt that the most was during the dance party uh, which was called uh, Pack the Pussy. Um, and, and I think that one felt so intimate because it was more than any of the other events. It was like this opportunity. It was like, please come into my pussy. Please come into this very personal space. 
Um, and it was sort of this exploration of um, queer and trans prioritized spaces. Um, it happened in this room. We, we tore down all the benches to open it up to be a dance floor. Um, and up top, there was a DJ booth where, where we played modded music discs um, with music from some trans electronic artists. So there's, there's lots of opportunities to change the game through modding um, and also constructing, constructing things. And so this, that's really what I focused on throughout the residency. And, and through that, I found all of these like interesting explorations of, of space and place and, and intimacy through kind of what I ended up developing. Um, yeah, I think I'll stop there. Um, that was amazing. That was such a good uh, summary of so much uh, work. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for you. folks who are interested in some of those uh, those events, the we do not have the uh, server currently up um, for cats, uh, for the public, for, for folks to visit, but there is a lot of documentation, including videos of the events that she mentioned, um, on the Ender Gallery YouTube, uh, which can be found through the Ender Gallery website, ender.gallery. Um, so as, yeah, so, uh, as well, there's a workshop coming up, we'll plug at the end, <laughs> we'll throw it, <laughs> uh, but, uh, we, we'll uh, switch over, we'll switch over to the, the next server. Fun fact, while we switch over, um, and their gallery currently has four Minecraft servers in rotation. <laughs> uh, two of them are in Bavaria, two are in Toronto, because a lot of our audience is in Canada, and we're hoping uh, being physically close might cut down leg. A lot of opportunity for uh, lower ping in our tangle of different locations. Um, we are also, um, if you're watching on uh, and commenting in the uh, Q&A section, uh, we'll be uh, reviewing those questions uh, after Hudi's presentation uh, right now. So feel free to line up some questions uh, for Kat, uh, for any of the curators, and for Hudi, who will be presenting next. Uh, so Hudi, we're here in your server. Yay! Hi! Hi, everybody. Yeah, um, as I mentioned, I'm a current resident uh, in Art and Gallery. So basically for this talk, I just want to talk about what lead me to here and um, what I've been working on right now. So actually, in my art practice, I'm primarily making sculpture objects, installations, and systems in physical space to examine word making processes and the coexistence of multiple contexts and narratives in late capitalism. I'm really interested in the constant wrestlings, um, negotiations and translations between the virtual digital context, including video games and the tangible sensorial world we occupy with our bodies. In my sculptures, I usually rearranging, reimagine and reconstruct elements I encountered in my life from different contexts, including on and off line. And then I kind of sort of recreate uh, research and create sculpture objects to construct a space situated in between. My interest and in exploration in the world of video games actually starts with my personal gaming experience in the live simulation video game, Animal Crossing New Horizons, which is launched on Nintendo Switch last year in March. During the worldwide lockdown caused by the coronavirus pandemic, I entered Animal Crossing uh, as a video game newbie, searching for both uh, a reprieve from the anxiety as well as an alternative side for structural life. In the process of gaming, I uh, create a spreadsheet called Game Care Log to document all sorts of game acts and activities in the game, including the time I spent, the money I earned and spent, and the natural resources elements I collected, the construction I made in the game, animal villagers I interacted with, and the trip I made to other people's island. From last year on May 17th to the same day this year, I played the game for a whole year without missing one single day. I ended up with a giant spreadsheet of 366 days of gaming data. So basically, if you ask me what I've been doing, what I did on a specific day last year in my real life, I 
certainly cannot remember it. But if you ask me like what I did in Animal Crossing, I can answer the question with confidence. So in this way, basically the digital life of my past year becomes like draws a parallel line of my actual life. And it even becomes like a predominant presence of my artist's life here. I didn't anticipate this project to be an artwork at first, but as I reflect and started to dive into the data, I started to get curious. My own obsession of the game and the complex relationship between play and labor, work and leisure, uh, as well as the simulated in real life reflected in data I collected confused me. Up until today, this project is still a work in progress. My current research almost becomes like data mining process, I would say, um, where I am trying to decipher the hidden patterns, meanings, and implication of my own gaming experience and its connection to the border context of both online and offline worlds I'm situated in. And, oh, no. earlier this year, uh, I created this installation entitled My Play Bench in the Workground. This installation consisting of seven sculptures uh, that come from the re reinterpretation of different tools I've been using in my artist studio, in the game I played, including Animal Crossing, and in my daily life, and in the software I use. This work is an attempt to contemplate the emergent politics and critical issues associated with the ever expansive merging between play and labor, as well as the physical and the virtual, the real and the simulated, and the fact and fiction in today's life. Now with Art and Gallery, I just started my journey in Minecraft. Uh, okay, here we go. E. Um, uh, my project research is entitled How to Become an Artist in Minecraft. So on the one hand, with almost no experience in non, um, Minecraft beforehand, I'm literally learning how to play and study Minecraft, what kind of topics I can research on and what kind of contribution I made to this conversation around Minecraft. On the other hand, this project aims to continue and expand my exploration in Animal Crossing on contemplating the spatial and temporal effects of inhabiting both the virtual and physical world as an artist. At the same time, I want to use this opportunity to actually uh, reflect upon my role as an artist. Um, as an artist, assuming uh, as an artist in today's world featuring the hyper hybrid, assuming it is artist's role to find or create up possibilities in all contexts, including on and offline. This research in aims to investigate what it means to create new possibilities by using the platform, the language, and the critical framework provided by video games like Minecraft. That is also my self-reflection upon what it means by claiming the role as an artist in a world like Minecraft, where so many gamers have already created so many amazing artwork in the game. What's my position, my voice, my agency, and my contribution to the game world, as well as probably more important to me, the ongoing conversation we have about the increasing squishes and resemblance between the game life and the so-called real life, especially in a time full of precarity and uncertainty. Also, how do I actually fit into the power dynamic game hidden behind the game we're actually playing? Um, as a spreadsheet maniac, I for sure started a spreadsheet for this game as well. In this spreadsheet of Minecraft, I have also documented different topics I'm learning about um, Minecraft every day, as well as my checking, checkout time, my references, and what I have been creating in the game. Besides learning about Minecraft, I also curate a sort of uh, some side projects I'm working on. And on this wall, you can see there are three panels presented here are the, um, are one of the side projects I'm working on. Uh, the first, this three panels present here of the, so basically I'm trying to, this is the, the birds, this is like the, um, the project I'm trying to per, um, build a bird soundscape for a lecture slash performance I plan to do as a crossover between my Minecraft studio and my real studio. These three panels presented here are the main instruments I'm using, I'm going to use to recreate the bird soundscape I recorded earlier this summer in a mountain area near Stimbun, Wisconsin. 
The, per the first panel uh, from the left is a digital model of a bird whistle I found online. The second panel is a 3D print of the model. And the third one is a 3D scan version of the 3D print. So the next step is going to be create another 3D print of the 3D scan version of it. Uh, I, I'm interested in how my current Minecraft world actually looks so similar to the mountains I was in. I want to create a soundscape dedicated to Minecraft, but use but using a instrument that has been through multiple translations between the digital and the physical to create a digital and technology mediated bad copy in quote of the natural bird sound, which I consider as appropriate bird sounds for Minecraft. So the goal for my research right now is to present a research exhibition and design an artist studio in Minecraft at the end of my residency with Edward Gallery, which is going to happen in September. And the spreadsheet I'm talking about of the Minecraft will also be published next week. So the public can also track what I've been doing to learn how to become an artist in Minecraft. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Just as the sun sets in the Minecraft world too, I think well timed. Amazing. Um, one thing just to start uh, the conversation um, for uh, both you sort of relating to what we were talking about around wanting to uh, create Ender Gallery as a response to the sort of frustrations that exist around showing digital art because um, uh, so often the the ways we exhibit it are, are just not really robust enough to accommodate all the different types of things that digital art can be and that's why amazefest's past two years of programming have been so much fun to see happen because they are sort of creating a 3d space that you can an interactive space as well as um showing uh interactive work and anyway we wanted to create something where the artists were intervening with the medium that they're using to create the art which i think both of you are obviously doing in big ways I'm not sure if the server is still on stream, but yes, I'm going to undertake a small bit of time travel. <laughs> um, so if anyone's in the Amaze Discord um, and they have uh, uh, questions, um, you can share them. And is there also a live stream chat? Uh, could be. Would that be? <laughs> so, so there may be a live stream chat separately. Uh, stay tuned. In the meantime, I have uh, some questions. Um, so a question for um, Kat. Uh, and I, I don't, it didn't, it didn't, you didn't mention it so much in your talk, but a big part of, um, your exhibition I know is writing. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your writing process, uh, for the, um, exhibition. Yeah, I would love to, um, learning to write in Minecraft was an interesting <laughs> process. Um, so in Minecraft, there's an object that's a book and quill um, that you can use to write write notes in. And then once you're like done, you can like finalize a book and sign it and name it. Um, and the pages are like very short um, and the lines are very short. So it's a very like restricted form of writing um, in particular because part of, uh, part of my process of writing was trying to make it like aesthetically pleasing as well. So not having just like really jagged lines um, or like in intentionally doing that sometimes. Um, but it was this, it really changed my flow of writing to write in Minecraft rather than in like a Google Doc or a Word Doc or a journal. Um, it, you know, each, each different sort of medium that you write in changes your process a bit. Um, and so it's, it's almost akin to like Twitter a little bit in terms of how you have to like write out your thoughts in these like sort of short, concise, um little segments uh but it was also a really frustrating process uh because there were a few times where like i would write for an hour and then my book would like disappear because the game would glitch in like 
the way the game handles books in creative mode is kind of weird. Um, and so like the book would glitch and then I would lose an hour of writing and it would be like, oh God. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a little bit about writing in Minecraft, I suppose. I think it's so cool and interesting that you undertook the writing also in the game and that it ended up changing the the texts in some ways. It's mm -hmm. uh, a really subtle but um, uh, interesting and important part of the installation, I think. Thank you. Um, yeah. I wanted to respond to uh, Nico's uh, sort of comment or thank you, as they say in the in the chat. But um, uh, sort of this concept uh, they mentioned, they want to say that they love the concept of using Minecraft as a museum in itself, and that they're impressed with how the different artists treated the space in itself and what to show and share in and within it. Um, I think it's really interesting that um, the two current artists that are that are on the panel today are using sort of more this um, or have have been using like the painting customization in Minecraft and then also uh, thinking about um, the work that is currently on on exhibit um, on uh, Ender Gallery not to derail from our current uh, folks but if you want to actually uh, see what is uh, the the most recent exhibit it's more of a Minecraft uh, custom texture pack for objects within Minecraft um, uh, Simon and Benedict's Odenak at the village is uh, uh, takes um, medicinal plants from uh, Abenaki territory and replaces the Minecraft default plants with them. Um, and so there's it, there was sort of uh, with the, the artists that we were uh, that we're working with. There's kind of this engagement with Minecraft as an exhibition space, but also Minecraft as a, a sort of an exploratory space and, and like the crossover between um, kind of as Hoodie is, is mentioning within her work that uh, that reality and then how Kat is discusses this as well, like how we can change um, the kind of realities we do experience and then take taking something like medicinal plants that have a very specific purpose and very important role in the community and taking them into this digital realm is, is uh, an interesting consideration that kind of goes outside of like what mu what we think of when we think of perhaps museums or art or like showing showcasing a specific thing within like an art context. Um, and I think this is just just thinking about like Minecraft as a museum, but also Minecraft as an experience, especially for the audience as they uh, begin to encounter that. And I think uh, Kat certainly like with all the um, events, you really like made a space for community in uh, in your exhibit, and we really saw that evolve. Uh, some of the work, some of the like spaces that you created were very specific to like the folks who were coming out and engaging with you on the server. Um, and I think like something that's just really that's just really interesting about Minecraft is that it's beyond and it can also do so much more than the museum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that like um, it's for me what I think is so interesting is not um, creating museums in Minecraft, though some of the mm -hmm. projects look like that, but it's um, it's treating Minecraft itself, the constraints of the game as an art medium. Um, and then thinking about what we can make with it. Um, the rule set is the, is the medium of the artwork in a way. Um, um, yeah. And I think all the artists have done that in different ways. Yeah, totally. I was wondering, Kat, what advice do you have for Huidi oh, about yeah. <laughs> being an artist in Minecraft? <laughs> <laughs> um, just like explore and uh, like watch Minecraft streams too, maybe as part of your research of like people building stuff or people modding the game um, can be really, really helpful. Um, and then, yeah, I also, you know, I, my installation ended up being like bigger than I expected, partly because of this like community aspect and, and this presentation aspect, um, but like really working within the limitations of the game with like a really limited palette of functionality um, and like really focusing on that. Um, 
yeah, I was curious, are you planning to bring your sort of uh, your digital bird song into like Minecraft as background music? Uh, I'm thinking about that, but I'm also thinking about to develop this like both, like, like kind of performance both in my actual physical studio as well as in Minecraft. And I want to follow up on the comments previously about the museum in Minecraft. And I think what I what I'm really interested in this residency or my fellow artists where you do like artwork inside of Minecraft is uh, I think we're not only using it as a showcase or like just put artwork on pedestal as in a museum. I uh, more consider this residency pro opportunity as a almost like a research lab. And uh, so, um, so it's a, more about this kind of in progress stuff. And I'm also thinking about the Minecraft is part of my studio, uh, physical studio, but at the same time, my physical studio is also part of Minecraft. So it's like really, it's kind of like a merge between those two studios. And so this is how I right now develop my research system and uh, my the side projects I'm developing right now as well. So it's like everything's gonna happen in both sides, I think. And thank you so much for the advice. <laughs> Are you, uh, I wasn't able to watch the, the stream oh. uh, just because of how our setup is. Are you planning to build like a studio space in your world um, to like do research in? Yeah, I think so. I think that's like in that uh, next, like my goal for the residency is like to have like a studio inside of it and as well as to put up a like exhibition, like a research exhibition inside of the gallery. Uh, so that's like my primary goal for this residency. But I kind of feel like this is going to be an ongoing process for a really long time. Um, you're set up near a village. Are you going to, what sort of relationship do you imagine having with the NPCs? Oh yeah, actually, I think I, when I did my proposal, I actually proposed like, I want to be an artist NPC inside of the world of the um, Minecraft or what does that mean to be an artist NPC or do we have an artist um, NPC and how we should imagine it inside of Minecraft? If it's like a, right now becomes like a role or like a profession or so should we have an artist NPC inside of Minecraft what uh, they should do so I guess that's a, uh, how I'm thinking about my relationship with NPCs probably is I want to become part of it or like uh, one member of it or just like create a one cat new category of NPC inside of Minecraft um, based on my own research and experience but uh, the relationship with the villagers, and um, I think I'm still in the process of exploring that, but I, I think it's a really interesting topic. And I also kind of feel like it's kind of related to what you just said about the physical presence of, um, of our, the game that we're playing. And I was thinking about the physical presence of an artist, our art studio in physical space, how that related to the context we're situated in. So yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, yeah, I love the the idea of the artist NPC mm -hmm. is uh, that would be just such such a good mod <laughs> to put on, <laughs> especially if you sort of uh, yeah create yeah. it through research. But that's is really going to be exciting to see uh, how you develop that that role. It's mm -hmm. a very cool um, performative practice. <laughs> So I have a question. Do you have, maybe have we have time for one one? We have time for one more question for sure. Okay. Uh, and it's a question uh, prompted Hootie by your project, but maybe also Kat has something to say about it because I believe you are both Animal Crossing players. Uh, <laughs> I've actually never played Animal Crossing, but I'm just thinking about how you've done the similar project in Animal Crossing and you're doing one in, in Minecraft, which is a game that um, you hadn't played so much prior to the residency. And I was just wondering if you could like, you know, what are the main differences of undertaking that you found in undertaking this kind of research in both games? And maybe Kat also has comments about Minecraft versus Animal Crossing. Uh, okay, so the main major differences right now, I think is just like, uh, I think someone mentioned earlier in the 
um, talk is about the limitation. I think Kat mentioned about it, like the limitation of game and uh, the two games totally have a different like setup and rules and limitation or we have to follow. And, but there are also like different ways we can like broke the system or kind of broke the rules, uh, break the rules inside of the game. So I, I think for me right now, I um, develop a system I, in the Animal Crossing and I'm sort of like using the system right now to um, study my craft. Like I have the spreadsheet and document everything and um, trying to um, collect data uh, of my gaming experience in my craft as well. Um, but I'm not sure yet whether it's gonna work or not. I think that's a really good question for me to also uh, figure out and to, to also explore. Um, and um, and I also love this concept of like working with limitation and to really think within as well as beyond the different limitation of the different worlds and also how to translate the different languages among different worlds, right? Like translate the um, stud research framework for Animal Crossing, does that work in Minecraft or um, does the research framework in my actual studio can be translated in Minecraft? So I think for me, like this kind of like a process of translating and the process to figure out how to translate is really fascinating. Pat, what do you think? Yeah, uh, there, I, I think the limitations that you spoke about are like really central. Um, and I think about like the limitations in Animal Crossing uh, are like the items that are presented to you um, largely. You can also like customize like the ground and you can customize some other things. Um, but largely it's about, or for me, it's about collecting outfits and about collecting items to create really satisfying spaces. Um, and so in my Animal Crossing game, I have a room that's set up as like an altar um, that has like some incense on a table and some tarot cards. And it's this like lots of plants in it and candles. And it's this very peaceful place in the game. Um, and so I, I mostly play Animal Crossing as a form of like dress up and imagining different outfits or different ways I could look and, and different spaces that I could have. Um, in Minecraft, uh, I was really interested in like how to go beyond the limits of the game through modding it um, and, and what opportunities modding allows. And it'd be really interesting to get deeper into modding um, or into like uh, Java programming modding um, to actually create new functionality in the game um, rather than just sort of uh, altering, altering existing blocks, creating new blocks with new functionality. Um, and like what opportunities could that afford if, if we pushed it even further? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That, yeah, I think that's a really awesome you know, future forward space to, to leave off on for this, uh, for this if, conversation. Oh, if sorry. you do that, Kat, please let us know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, this is the inaugural season of Ender Gallery programming, but uh, we can, we can only hope that there are going to be more. Um, in order to keep uh, abreast of all the, the developments, including uh, Hoodie's uh, residency progress, that document that she'll be releasing next week for the public to see how to be a, my, an artist in Minecraft. Um, please follow us at Ender Gallery on Instagram. Um, you can friend us on, if you're watching through the Discord, uh, you can friend request us and we'll invite you to uh, uh, our Discord where you can hang out. Um, yeah, the, 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 URL uh, for our website is going on the stream, so ender.gallery. Um, and if you want to specifically see the work that's on exhibit right now, it's ender.gallery slash how to join. So uh, we have also, and one more shout out is we have a workshop by Kat that will be occurring 
on her uh, studio or her uh, residency or exhibition server now <laughs> um, on uh, Sunday, August 2nd. Um, that uh, is through Toronto's Vector Festival. Um, so pay what you can. It's a, it's a uh, beginning and theory workshop for Minecraft. So uh, it'll definitely be something you won't want to miss. Uh, but yeah, that's all. That'll be all updated on the Instagram as well. So it's all the plugs I have to say. <laughs> Very quickly <laughs> before we sign off today. Thank you so, so much. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks to Thank Amaze for having us. Thanks to Hootie and Kat for coming and telling us about your work. Um, yeah. And have a good uh, evening or day wherever you are. <laughs> Bye everybody. Bye.